So welcome to you this week as we gather together for our online worship gathering from around the world and also from this little bit of Sussex. May God bless us as we meet together. few moments of quiet. Let's think of the times when we've made excuses to get out of things that God wanted us to do, or when we've said or done things that were wrong. Let's come to the Lord, who is full of love and forgiveness, and tell him about those things. For turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives, Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For behaving just as we wish without thinking of you. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For failing you, not only by what we do, but also by our thoughts and words. 
Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For acting as if we were ashamed to belong to your dear Son, Jesus, Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. Together we say, Father, we have failed you often and humbly ask your forgiveness. Help us so to live that others may see your glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now may the God of love bring you back to himself. Forgive us all for all the things that we have done wrong and assure us of his everlasting love. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided Our reading this week comes from Matthew chapter 16, beginning at verse 21. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. For you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If anyone want to become my followers, 
Let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life, my sake, will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Stories of the Bible The Parable of the Wealthy Man This is Jesus hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love. He healed many people from their sickness, performed many miracles like calming storms, and even raised people from the dead. One day, a crowd gathered around Jesus to hear him talk. The crowd was so big that people were stepping on each other. Hey, watch it! Jesus was talking to his disciples when someone called out from the crowd. Hey, Jesus! Teacher, tell my brother to divide with me the property our father left us. Ah, uh, hold on there. Jesus said, friend, who made me a judge over you to decide such things as that? Be careful and guard against all kinds of greed. A man's life is not measured by the many things he owns. Huh? Then he told them a story. A rich man had a fertile farm that produced fine crops. He said to himself, what should I do? I don't have room for all my crops. Hmm. Ah, I got it. Then he said, I know. I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones. Then I'll have room enough to store all my wheat and other goods. And I'll sit back and say to myself, my friend, you have enough stored away for years to come. <laughs> now take it easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. <laughs> but God said to him, you fool, you will die this very night. <laughs> Wait, what? Then who will get everything you worked for? Yes, a person is a fool to store up earthly wealth, but not have a rich relationship with God. Jesus had to do it himself. Any advice from Peter or the others wasn't going to help. No one could do this for him. It was his journey. It was his cross. Did the disciples get it? Well, no. But then why should they? How could they? It wasn't their cross to understand. They weren't going to carry it. <laughs> and don't we go on and on about Jesus' cross? Uh, OK, we have an abstract understanding, stuff about dying for our sin, which is all correct. But that's different to understanding what it meant for Jesus. We have cross overload. Say a word often enough and we can begin to lose any real meaning it originally had. Cross, 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 cross. And so we could go on. So that's his cross, Jesus' cross. But there is another cross he talks about in our reading, a cross that belongs to someone else. It's my cross. I say mine only because I cannot speak for anyone else. Neither can I give advice or direction about anyone else's cross. Peter tried to advise Jesus about his, and that didn't go down particularly well. Believe me, I'd rather think about your cross or their cross or any cross other than my own. But no, Jesus told each of the disciples to take up their own cross and follow him. Follow him. That's what really makes this all so personal, so unique to each of us. It's the journey. And I know even less about where that's going to take you 
then I know where it's going to take me. And thank God, I know next to nothing about where my future following will go. I do know that we all have to carry this particular cross. Or not. It is up to you. The following Jesus cross. The find your life by losing it cross. The self-help is no help cross. The self-sacrifice cross. The way to your true self cross. The following Jesus cross. It's probably a really good idea to think about this one. I say this one because there are all sorts of crosses that come our way. Some we have to shoulder because we have absolutely no choice. Some appear to be the exact opposite to crosses, but they turn out to be more burden than blessing. Others, well, we make decisions and that's how life's journey is. I guess I guess that's where the cartoon Bible story that we had at the beginning fits in. All those treasures and things we want. It's not so much do I want to carry a cross, it's about which cross am I going to carry. So the following Jesus cross, that's a decision worth taking time over because it is about all of life and can seem so contrary to the clamour of noise around us. And like all followings, it's not a matter of a one-off choosing. Step by step, day by day, turn by turn, we take up our cross and follow him. Oh
So may the peace of the Lord Christ go with us wherever he may send us. May he guide us through the wilderness, protect us through the storm. May he bring us home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown us. May he bring us home rejoicing once again into our doors. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with each one of us and remain with us now and forever. Amen. As we leave this place, fill us with your love and grace that we may be more like you in every single step. We're on our way May every thought and word we say Be filled with beauty, hope and faith As we go out in your name As we leave with your love